This is Value Investing. I'm your host, Jun Kim. In this podcast, you'll learn everything related to value investing. Welcome to episode 13 of Value Investing. In this episode of podcast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over six acquisition criteria for Berkshire Hathaway. This, these are the criteria Warren Buffett set out and are included in every annual letter of Berkshire Hathaway. For Warren Buffett to just put it out there so that people who are interested in selling their business can know what kind of criteria Warren Buffett checks when he buys a business from outside. So if you're a business owner and if you're interested in selling your business, then you should check these six criteria and first you have to meet them. And next, what you're going to do is you're going to call Warren Buffett if he's interested in buying your business. So that's kind of the process that you go through. I think the reason why it's important for us to go through these six criteria is because it goes to show that what kind of factors Warren Buffett checks when Warren Buffett is considering buying a business from outside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into more details of these six criteria and see where you can apply these different criteria for your investment decisions. I think it's going to be one of the most important topics on this podcast because you can directly apply to your investment decision and and you can learn quite a lot from how Warren Buffett makes his decision when it comes to acquiring the entire business. And also you can apply this one when you buy a certain portion of company in the stock market. Before we get into the details, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and five star review always goes a long way. Without further ado, why don't we get started? The first condition that Warren Buffett checks when it comes to buying a business is the size of the business. So Warren Buffett only considers the purchase when the business has at least 75 million of pre-tax earnings. So the reason why Warren Buffett considers the size first is because he doesn't want to waste his time because he has such a large capital base. In order to make a dent in his portfolio return, he has to consider uh, the business that's making at least $75 million of pre-tax earnings. So that's why he put this condition first so that he doesn't want to waste his time talking about business acquisition with other people. Because if you are in his position, then you get thousands of calls from everywhere and people are trying to sell their businesses. And he just wants to put this condition up front so that he only takes calls from people who have the business with large pre-tax incomes. One thing that I want to comment here is that even though you cannot directly apply this condition for your investment decision, I want to mention one thing here, which is very important. Because a lot of institutional investors, hedge fund managers, pension managers, Warren Buffett, and these institutional managers have a lot of resources Uh, people and money in order to do their research. But one weakness that they have is they have large capital base. So they only consider investment decisions when the company size is uh, greater than certain threshold. For example, market value greater than 1 billion, something like that. They don't want to waste their time and they don't even want to do any research on the companies with market cap less than for example, $1 billion. So this is where you can take advantage if you're an individual investor. So if you're listening to my podcast and interested in learning about value investing, the value investing is all about taking advantage of mispricing in the marketplace. And since a lot of institutional investors focus their energy 
on large cap stocks. If you look at small cap stocks, small companies in the marketplaces, you'll see a lot of mispricing. And that's where you can make a lot of money. Even though these small stocks prices are very volatile compared to large cap stocks, but you can see a lot of opportunities for you as an investor to make your money because your capital base small you have the flexibility to invest your capital anywhere in the market so if you want to find mispricing or inefficiency in the market then small stocks are good place to look for inefficiency in the market and you can be successful as a volume investor. So this is one thing that I want to mention from uh, this first condition, and it's quite important for you as an individual investor. The second condition that Warren Buffett mentioned in his acquisition criteria is that he wants a business that demonstrated consistent earning power. Warren Buffett mentioned that future projections are of no interest to us nor our turnaround situations so this is also interesting condition and this is something that directly apply to your investment decision as well so there are just so many different types of businesses out there in the stock market and if you want to make an investment decision you can go with the businesses with stable earning power and so these are the businesses that make the profits and their incomes consistently year over year without much fluctuation or you can go with the businesses with a lot of fluctuation so let me just give you uh, one example for each of these extreme scenarios so if you look at for example coca-cola so coca-cola has been selling its products for over 100 years and if you look at their earnings the earnings are consistent year over year without much fluctuations and people drink coca-cola every day and will do that in the future however if you look at pharmaceutical companies depending on when they get their approval from the government the company can make a super successful product which will lead to huge earning power in the future or it can completely crush because they don't get approval from the government for whatever pharmaceutical product that they are making. So earnings for such pharmaceutical companies go up and down and are very volatile. So these are the not the companies that Warren Buffett is interested in. And also one thing that I want to point out here is that Warren Buffett is not interested in turnaround situations. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing and some people made money from turnaround situations and you can make tons of money if company comes back with a good solid uh, business model and maybe they are, the company is in a bankruptcy process and if it comes back and get back on normal business operations, you can make tons of money from there. But it's quite risky. So Warren Buffett is only interested in getting the call from business owners when the business has cons uh, demonstrated consistent earning power in the past. So Warren Buffett is quite different from other investors in many ways if you look at this condition because some investors are willing to invest at a very, very early stage of the company. So for example, there are angel investors who are fusing their capital into startups at the very early stage startup. And also, there are venture capitalists who invest their money also at early stage. So their strategy is completely different. So they don't have any financial statements. The company has not demonstrated earning powers for the operation. But they look at the founder and business model. And without this demonstrated earning power, they just put a lot of capital. And in the past decade that strategy has been successful and if you get really big winner then even if you have a lot of uh, losers in your portfolio one big winner for example facebook or amazon can definitely make up for all the losses from uh, these other losing bets so 
Warren Buffett has just a different investment strategy. I'm not saying that this strategy is better than the other, but there are just many different ways you can make money in the stock market. But Warren Buffett, if you focus on Warren Buffett, he's not interested in those strategy, different strategies, and he's sticking with the strategy that worked for him, which is just buying the business that has demonstrated earning power in the past. The third condition Warren Buffett checks when it comes to acquiring a business is whether or not the business is earning good returns on equity while employing little or no debt. So this is quite important point when it comes to assessing business model. So there are just many different businesses out there and some businesses have really good quality asset and quality products. Whereas other businesses are subpar businesses, then how can you determine which one is a good business and which one is bad business? One metric that is the most important metric that you can apply and Warren Buffett applies is returns on equity. And sometimes he say returns on tangible equity, but this is the most important metric that you have to use in order to assess whether the business has a good business model. And also here he's saying that while employing little or no debt. So let's get into the details why this metric is important and why you have to consider whether or not the company is employing debt. Let's just give an example. Let's say you have $100 million in your savings account. And let's say the savings account give you 2% interest on your $100 million. What you can do is simply put your $100 million in your savings account and you get $2 million back because that's a 2% interest. And you don't have to do anything. You just put the money there and you get this $2 million. So if the company is only focusing earning per share, which here is $2 million, then what you can easily do, you can borrow money from outside and put another $100 million in your savings account. Then because savings account give you 2% back, you're going to get $4 million. What then the company management can do is try to promote their excellence by just mentioning earning per share double over the last one year or two year. But what simply happened here is simply you're borrowing money and put it in your savings account. So 100 million becomes 200 million. That's why earning per share double from 2 million to $4 million. So if you purely consider earning per share, that could be misleading. So what's important is you have to look at their earning per share and compare that against your capital base. So what this metric does, uh, returns on equity is you're comparing your returns against whatever capital base that you have. To make the long story short, if you have to choose one metric that can be used to determine whether the business has good business model, I would say this returns on equity metric can be used and you have to look at this metric over the course of different business cycles and see if the business has had consistently high returns on equity throughout different periods. Okay, let's move on to the fourth condition. What Warren Buffett also checks when it comes to acquiring a business is to see whether the management is in place. So this is quite different also from other institutional investors like private equity managers because in many cases what private equity managers do is buy entire business and change the management team in the hopes of improving operations within the business. But Warren Buffett doesn't want to change the management team unless they are really, really poor. And if they are poor, then Warren Buffett doesn't buy the business in the first place. When he comes to buying a business, Warren Buffett wants the management team in place. And two things Warren Buffett emphasize here. The first thing is that management team has to be honest. They have to have a high integrity in their business practice. And second, obviously, management has to be competent in whatever that they're doing. 
So this is how Warren Buffett was able to scale up his operation because he has many businesses that he has to oversee. Because if management team is honest in terms of reporting numbers back to him after the acquisition, and if management is capable of running the business in first class manner, then Warren Buffett doesn't have to spend a lot of time overseeing these individual businesses. That's why he was able to acquire so many different types of businesses and let them run their business, let them run their show. And the only thing Warren Buffett does is getting the reports from now and then. And if the business cannot employ the capital in a profitable manner, then capital goes back to Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett buys other businesses that have good future prospects. So there's a good divide in responsibilities between the management team and Warren Buffett. So as I mentioned, other institutional investors uh, have different strategies. And also here again, I'm not saying which one is better and or worse, because in some cases, management team is not good. And you can go in there as a private equity manager to buy entire business and completely change the management team improve the operations, streamlining the process, and you can make tons of money in that way. But it requires a lot of your time and energy in order to make that happen. But Warren Buffett, as you know, has many, many businesses under him, and he doesn't want to waste time trying to fix the business. He wants the management team in place so that he doesn't have to spend his time here. And also, he likes to work with the people whom he trusts and he admires. So if the management team has high integrity, which is very important because if the management is start cheating on Warren Buffett in terms of reporting numbers in order to get high incentive and things like that, then Warren Buffett, it's going to be headache for Warren Buffett. So integrity is top priority for Warren Buffett. And also... Management has to be competent. So the way he can determine whether management is competent is also going back to the previous condition, whether the management team has produced good returns on equity compared to competitors in the same industry. Let's move on to the fifth condition. So fifth condition that Warren Buffett put in his acquisition criteria is that he's going to buy only the businesses, simple businesses that he can understand. So he says that if there's a lot of technology, then he's not going to be able to understand. Even if business is good and financial statements are good, he's not going to be able to buy the business. So here, again, very important concept here. Warren Buffett only buys the businesses that he understands so there are just tons of businesses out there he doesn't understand he's just simply take a pass on those businesses if you're an individual investor and if you're so excited about one company and if you don't fully understand the business model and the products that the business is selling but you just go there and based on some interesting article and let's say you invest in pharmaceutical company even though you don't know what kind of pills or products the pharmaceutical company is making then it's a huge mistake this is what warren buffett calls circle of confidence you have to stay within your circle of confidence if you go out of your circle of confidence then that's a mistake because it's not investing anymore it's a speculation So when you invest your money, your hard-earned money, you have to make sure that you are investing in a business that you understand. You may have some edge over the people. Let's say I mentioned about pharmaceutical company, but you may not have that understanding. And some people may have good understanding about pharmaceutical company because they are in in that industry. And if they have that knowledge And that's going to translate into competitive advantages as an individual investor. So whatever industry you're working on, that's probably a good starting point because you have expertise in that industry, which company is doing well and which company is not. And it's going to be way better if you invest your money in other businesses. So stay within your circle of confidence 
don't go beyond your circle of confidence. So Warren Buffett also has consistently mentioned about taking a pass on many interesting investment opportunities. Just because the stock price has gone up over the last two years, let's say Netflix or Amazon, doesn't really give you a good reason for you to invest. If you truly understand Amazon and Netflix and you're investing your money, it's fine. You're staying within your circle of confidence. But you're investing your money because your neighbor made the money on these stocks and you've seen this stock going up, the price going up in the past. I don't think that's a good reason for you to invest your money. So try to only invest in a business you understand and stay within that circle of confidence. Finally, we are on to the last one. The last condition that Warren Buffett mentioned in his acquisition criteria is an offering price. Warren Buffett said, quote, We don't want to waste our time or that of the seller by talking even preliminarily about a transaction when the price is unknown. So Warren Buffett doesn't want to waste his time. He wants to get on a call with the seller, potential seller, only when potential seller has some offering price in his mind or her mind. So that's what one of the conditions he put it there just to save his time, not to talking to a bunch of random people, but he wants to make sure that the seller has some price in his or her mind. One thing that I also want to mention here is that Warren Buffett considers price very, very seriously. And this is quite obvious, whatever, like whether you're buying a computer, laptop, cell phone, whatever product you're buying as a customer, you consider price before you buy. It's the same for acquisition. But I want to emphasize here is that what Warren Buffett does when it comes to buying a business is assessing the business intrinsic value and compare that against the offering price from the seller. If the intrinsic value is significantly below the offering price, that's where Warren Buffett likes to buy and pay money. So this is what Warren Buffett calls margin of safety. So when margin of safety, which represents the gap between intrinsic value and offering price, offering price has to be higher than intrinsic value. And when this gap margin of safety is large enough, then you don't have to worry about making investment mistakes as much as the cases where margin of safety is very low. Because intrinsic value, I haven't discussed this intrinsic value, how we can calculate this intrinsic value on this podcast. I'm going to do that in in the future episode. But when intrinsic value is calculated, it is very subjective. There are just so many different components that go into the intrinsic value. And intrinsic value cannot be pinpointed into a single number. It should be range of values. But when when you calculate that, there's always potential room for error. So if you have a large margin of safety, then this potential error to the investors could be mitigated to a certain extent. Okay, today we talked about six criteria that Warren Buffett considers as far as the acquisition is concerned for Berkshire Hathaway. Large purchases, at least $75 million of pre-tax earnings, demonstrated consistent earning power, businesses earning good returns on equity, management in place, simple businesses that Warren Buffett can understand, and finally, an offering price. And I also provided my comments and what insights we can glean from these six different criteria and how you can apply these things for your investment strategies. I hope that you learned quite a lot from this podcast episode. And before I end, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and five-star review always goes a long way. And thank you very much and see you next time.